We got the hits. We got the gist. This is Lagos number one lifestyle station. City 1051 FM. Thank God it's Friday edition of Sports City on the Bond Lifestyle Station, City 1051. Fernando Alonso reflects on F1 career, names Schumacher as toughest opponent, cash reigns for the Super Four cons ahead of the Equatorial Guinea clash in the African Women Cup of Nations, Blatter calling for Infantino to be investigated as Spurs and Chelsea clash at Stamford Bridge, signaling return of club football. I'm good friend among the silent in the program. As you know, it's Sports City on your number one lifestyle station, City 1054. City 1051 FM. City 1051 is a social media platform where you can be part of the conversation using the hashtag Sports City. For WhatsApp, 8090991644403. And the phone number is usual 0700 the Building up to the Super Falcons clash against Equatorial Guinea. All they need to do is just pick up maximum three points in that game and they'll be through to the semi-finals of the competition irrespective of the outcome between South Africa and Zambia. After yesterday's explanation on the show, some people still didn't understand it. Some had to tweet at me. Some even uh, reached out to say, hey, uh, could you explain this further? You know what? I'll try and make out time and explain it. That's in a possible scenario where we have three teams uh, finishing on six points in that particular group, which involves Nigeria, Zambia, as well as South Africa. I'll try and do that much later on the show, but let's start immediately from the world of basketball. Now, no game was played this morning. But later today, there will be two games in the NBA and the Timberwolves, they get to play uh, away against the Nets, that's in Brooklyn. Then we'll get to see another game in Los Angeles, which involves the Clippers and Memphis. So those are the two games to expect later today, the first one between Wolves and Brooklyn happening sometime around 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. Then uh, Memphis against uh, Clippers will be happening at 9.30 p.m. But I'm still speaking of the NBA, uh, Kyrie Ivan, uh, just <laughs> after that loss um, when the Celtics uh, suffered the 117 loss against the New York Knicks. A reporter uh, went to Kyrie and asked him what he felt about the Thanksgiving. And he responded in a very, very funny manner. I, I, I need to take that quote. And he actually used the F word. Uh, as referring to the Thanksgiving. Obviously, he was very angry at that point, but he's tweeted now, and let me take his tweet at Kyrie Ivan. He says, meant no disrespect to the holiday and those who celebrated respectfully. I'm grateful for the time we all can share with our families. We are always one. And this is coming from Kyrie Ivan. And so, yeah, he's saying that he was basically frustrated after losing that particular night and that the question uh, didn't mean anything to him at that point. Let's drive up to the world of Formula One and shocking news yesterday when it was confirmed that Robert Kubica will return to Formula One. It's good to see him return, uh, but this guy has been absent since 2010. I remember him uh, suffering a cla uh, rather crash on the eve of the 2011 Formula One season and he sustained bodily injuries in that crash and hasn't raced um, competitive look okay, let me say hasn't raced in Formula 1 has actually had a few races here and there a few tests here and there but he's making a return to Formula 1 and will be driving for Williams uh, Williams have confirmed this and I look at him at 33 with not so much experience at this point to just feel that maybe younger drivers could embarrass him when the season proper begins <laughs> especially uh, when you consider the likes of Charles Leclerc uh, will be moving to uh, that Ferrari next season. Even Pierre Gasly uh, crossing over to Red Bull. Lots of drivers moving around the coming, uh, for the coming season. And for one person at the end of this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix this weekend, do expect to see him in Formula 1 again. I'm referring to Fernando Alonso, the Spaniard. Uh, he's set to throw in the towel after this weekend's race. And he has reflected on the whole of his Formula One career, let's hear from the Spaniard Fernando Alonso. The best thing that I uh, I have from from that one time is going to be the you know the people that I work with, um, the people that I share uh, half of my life. You know, I'm, I'm 37 and I've raced here 18 years, so it's, it's half of my life uh, with a lot of talented engineers, uh, designers. 
you know, mechanics, you guys, the media, everyone, you know, we, we share a lot of close. things, you know, a lot of days yeah, like. over the, uh, the seasons. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's that works, the, works, works. the best thing that I, I will always... All right, one thing we will remember very well uh, was how he won the championships. I think that was 2005, 2006, back to back actually with Renault uh, before he went on to join McLaren the following year and spent only one season at McLaren in 2007. And interestingly, there was a rookie joining him that particular season and that rookie <laughs> is the star of the moment. I'm referring to Lewis Hamilton and Lewis Hamilton also spoke concerning Alonso paying tribute to him and wishing him the very best in future endeavor. I definitely think that actually we're older old men now, so we the respect between us uh, I'd like to think is higher than it's ever been and I don't think that's ever gonna change. And um, I do hope that uh, Fernando's at least around or at least I get to see him in, in the future is someone I've always respected highly as a driver as I've always commented on and so um... hmm. you expect to see him in future would it be in Formula 1 big question let's find out from the Spaniard if he's actually not seen any intention of returning to the sport right now it's, it's, it's difficult to think about the coming back but uh, yeah, the, the door is not closed. I think, um, or, or the first reason is because I, I don't know how I will feel next year. I mean, I've been doing this for for my whole life, so maybe well, you next year by doing April or May, it, you know, I'm desperate uh, in, in the sofa. So, um, you know, maybe I I find a way somehow to come back. Hello, good morning. Hello. Okay, actually not time for calls, but the phone lines have just been blinking, uh, so I just said, okay, let me see what's happening on that side, but just keep your hands on your keypad and just keep it handy, because much later, let's say after 8 to are about, we'll throw open the phone lines and you can be part of the conversation, but let's run through the stories as quickly as possible, and we're still talking Formula 1 at this point, and we just finished playing the voice of Lewis Hamilton as well as that of Fernando Alonso, who is retiring at the end of this particular Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, which is the final race for the 2018 calendar. Then after that, expect drivers moving here. And then I already mentioned Charles Leclerc joining Ferrari, and that means that Kimi has to leave Ferrari, and Kimi is actually moving to Renault, and rather Sauber, uh, where he used to be. And for the Red Bull driver, uh, da, 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 Danny Ricciardo. Danny Ricciardo is leaving Red Bull and he's going uh, to Renault. And that's for next season. So drivers moving here and there and replacing him at Red Bull. Uh, we'll get to see Pierre Gasly coming. So, so many changes ahead of the next season, but that's still a far, far time to come. That's sometime in next year. So let's just leave that. But the focus is for this weekend and tomorrow and later on Sports City Extra will get to delve more into the Formula One races. Now for Tony Bellew, after he lost embarrassingly, in my opinion, against Alexander Yusik, that was sometime early this month, I actually called for him to retire from boxing. And the former Cruiserweight champion has done simply that and has thrown in the tower 12 days after that defeat against Yusik. So do expect him boxing again in the ring. Let's go on a short break, guys. It's a commercial break. Just stay with us, uh, stay with us on return. I will be looking at the uh, preparation of the Super Falcons ahead of the clash against Equatorial Guinea, what they need to do, uh, the possible scenarios that could play out in that particular group, and how the Super Falcons would fare. And again, I made mention of uh, Cash Rain. You want to find out how much was doled out to the team after that victory against Zambia. It's Sport City. City 1051 FM. So, uh, the Super Falcons will be in action tomorrow evening against Equatorial Guinea, having hammered Zambia by four goals to nothing in the second game they've played at the African Women Cup of Nations. Their opening game was against Zambia, where they lost 0-1. And so they have three points, and on the table they have a plus three goal difference. 
Now, let me explain now, uh, because yesterday I was painting a scenario where maybe all three teams will finish on six points. Let's say Zambia get to beat South Africa, and so that means Nigeria beating Equatorial Guinea will all be on three points. So, which two teams will get to progress to the next phase of the competition? It's quite simple. I've been that calf adopts head to head. Uh, the scenario is that the result against Equatorial Guinea will be automatically nullified. So the results that will be considered will be the games involving Nigeria, Zambia, and South Africa only. So if you like, go on and score 100 goals against Equatorial Guinea. If all three teams should finish on six points, then the results will be inconsequential. Now, Nigeria has played South Africa, Nigeria has played Zambia, and these are the two countries that could come up uh, when you talk about teams finishing in uh, with six points in this possible scenario. So it means that Nigeria haven't picked up a minus one goal difference against South Africa, made up for that in the game against Zambia. So scoring four in that one means that Nigeria now up by plus three goal difference. Now the other game involving Zambia and South Africa, which will be happening simultaneously when Nigeria will play Equatorial Guinea, it means that Zambia for them to qualify would need to beat Zambia uh, South Africa by at least three nil. Because at the moment, having considered, uh, considered four against Nigeria, it means that they are on a minus four. So if they go on to win 3-0, their goal difference will improve to minus one. But on the flip side, it means that South Africa, who are currently of plus one having beaten Nigeria, it means that they will drop to minus two. And so South Africa will leapfrog, uh, rather, um, Zambia will not leapfrog South Africa in, uh, that means um, Nigeria, and uh, which, um, Nigeria and Zambia will go through in the process and South Africa crashing out. All Nigeria needs to do is just beat Equatorial Guinea, be it half nil, one nil, irrespective of the outcome of the other game, Nigeria would go through to the semi-finals of the competition. So it's quite simple, it's as good as Nigeria going through, being that <laughs> if you look at the results, uh, that Equatorial Guinea have actually bagged in so many goals this more like they've considered many goals already in this competition considered seven against south africa and also five against zambia so nigeria surely the favorites but you don't like to say in football <laughs> you can never be too sure and so it's quite simple there for the super falcons and most likely if you ask me for my prediction i think south africa will avoid a defeat against zambia and even if they get to lose i don't see them losing by a three goal margin because if they lose by a two goal margin they will still be above Zambia and will qualify and hopefully alongside Nigeria. So since we're talking about the African Women Cup of Nations games to be played today, uh, Cameroon who are on six points, they get to play against the host nation Ghana. Ghana must win that to stand a chance of progressing to the next stage. Um, but for um, the Cameroonians, well, they're as good as qualified in all honesty. For Mali, uh, will beat uh, Ghana, last time out, they get to play against the whooping side in the group, and that's Algeria. And so it's looking like Mali will most likely go through. Then it will now be uh, the outcome of the other game. We'll now get to see maybe one other person going through. But it's still uh, delicately poised in that particular group. Anybody could still go through. Okay, so those are the two games happening today. But for the Super Falcons, after that victory against Zambia, the NFF doled out money to the team. And for each of the players, they got $3,000. Now, remember that $3,000 is a win bonus. So, $6,000 that they received that they meant that one, uh, the $3,000 was for the away qualifier against Gambia. And then the win against Zambia. They got nothing for losing to South Africa, by the way. Uh, but the return leg where they hammered Zamb uh, Gambia to qualify, they will get to be paid in Naira when they return from the African Women Cup of Nations. So the guys are smiling to the bank, uh, I, I rather um, the women are smiling to the bank. Now the head coach, Thomas Denabi, he got $15,000 in the process. So much money for the girls, wish them the very best as they try to make Nigeria proud in the African Women Cup of Nations. They won eight out of the last 10 Equatorial Guinea, the other nation that has won uh, two other editions of this competition, uh, but the Super Bowl got Charlotte favorites. Okay, since we're talking women football, let me add also that Nigeria's representative at the FIBA 
um, tournament in Africa currently going on. We're talking about first bank of Lagos. Uh, they are through to the quarterfinals. Yes, after they top to their road group and will be playing FAP of Cameroon. And the good thing about this first bank team is that two members of the squad, Nkema Karaway as well as Nkechi Akashili, both of them were in the, the Tigress squad that went to the World Cup in Spain at Tenerife to be specific and got to the quarterfinals of that competition. It was a very fantastic outing for the Nigerian team and two of them are the guys pushing at uh, this first bank team as they get to face as FAP of Cameroon. They've won all the games they've played in this competition. That's first bank, but for the Cameroonians, the same can't be said of them because they've only picked up one win and had to finish fourth in their own group. And they face a very, very high flying elephant, and that's in first bank. Short break on return will tell you why Seth Blatter is asking that um, Infantino, who is the current FIFA president, be probed. And also, IFAB are looking at introducing new rules in football. Hmm. You want to stick around and hear what those rules are? It's still Sport City on the Ball Lifestyle Station, City 1051. City 1051 FM. Let's start with a story concerning the International Football Association borders IFAB and part of the new, um, or more like the proposed, changes to football that they are making one has to do with substitution and i think this makes a lot of sense because we've seen many times we've seen teams who are on the winning side when a player is being substituted the player would have gone to the far end of the pitch and that means he would have to walk almost the entire length of the pitch to exit when being substituted now what i are proposing is that look if wherever you are, you have to move to the nearest exit on the pitch. So if you're on the other side, you're near the corner flag, just move away from there. Then go all the way around to your dugout and sit there. So that's basically it. You don't have to walk the entire length of the pitch when being substituted because a lot of players, even coaches, have adopted this as a means of time wasting uh, in football. So the, expand, the proposal is out already, but the voting will take place sometime in March next year. So we keep fingers crossed. 2nd of March, actually, is the date uh, when the voting process will take place. Now, apart from that, all the proposals they are putting through, uh, uh, they, are, they are also proposing to scrap the ABBA penalty shootout format and introducing yellow and red cards for team officials, okay? Uh, looking at all the things, um, trying to go through this, this stuff now, okay? Now there's this one uh, concerning uh, handball situations also. It's a lot, but the big one for me is a substitution when players are leaving uh, the field of play. And I mentioned FIFA president Gianni Infantino and his predecessor, and that's uh, Seb Blatter. Now, Seb Blatter is serving the ban for corruption, uh, but he's calling on authorities to investigate the current uh, FIFA president, his uh, successor, and that's Gianni Infantino. And according to Blatter, yes, I remember that the, uh, the Football League website, Football Leagues, actually did write a story saying that Infantino offered favors to a senior Swiss prosecutor by name, uh, Rinaldo Arnold. And according to this Football League website, they are saying that that might have been in a bid to get information concerning uh, FIFA probe. And so maybe Infantino, in their opinion, was trying to see if he was mentioned anywhere because remember he was UEFA General Secretary for a very long time, even while Seb Blatter was FIFA president. So Seb Blatter is saying, you know what? Prosecute this guy. His hands are not clean also. <laughs> That's coming from the embattled uh, Seb Blatter. Okay, moving on to other matters now. For VAR, we've seen that being used in different leagues across the world. It was also used at the FIFA World Cup this year in Russia. And Ancelotti, uh, he's the coach of Napoli. And VAR was introduced even last season in the Serie A. And he's saying that, look, VAR needs to come into the UEFA Champions League. Now, he, he he's aware of the defense that many have put forward saying that uh, VAR will not be manned by a competent referee could be an issue and they're saying that look from the quarterfinal stage or rather from the knockout phase of UEFA Champions League it's only experienced coaches or rather um, referees that man those games 
and as such, uh, these guys should know how to handle the VAR. So the excuse of having inexperienced uh, referees handling VAR doesn't come in. And so he hopes that this is introduced this season and as such, that all the mistakes being witnessed will be a thing of the past. Uh, quickly for Sergio Mane, he signed a new contract at Chelsea. The details were not made public, but his current deal runs out in 2021. And we hear that it's a two-year extension that means till 2023. Lionel Messi's Barcelona will be facing Atletico Madrid this weekend. And that's one of the big games happening uh, for the Lodge Blancos. They could go top. Uh, two points clear of Barcelona with a win, but Atletico haven't beaten at um, Barcelona in 17 attempts in all competition. As a matter of fact, Diego Simeone is yet to beat them uh, since being Atletico Madrid manager in the league. And as it stands now, Lionel Messi, who loves scoring against Atletico Madrid, having scored 28 goals in all competitions against Diego Simeone's side, he's been declared fit to face them again and so huh, their, nemesis, their nemesis surely will be filing out against them. Now I made mention of the big clash happening at Wembley and that's the one involving Spurs and Chelsea and that's the biggest game when you look at the English Premier League but also I will get to see West Ham they get to play against Manchester City who are the champions and the leaders presently. Two players, okay one player from West Ham that Pablo Zabaleta, as well as the manager of West Ham, Pellegrini. These guys were at Man City some seasons back and were instrumental when they won the league. Now, Zabaleta is speaking concerning hosting Manchester City and he's saying that Pellegrini hasn't changed the tactics more and so much and when you compare it to what used to be at Manchester City and what is presently um, is the case at West Ham. 1051FM The voice of Pablo Zabaleta speaking ahead of the clash between West Ham and uh, Manchester City. That's one of many big games. Okay, that's not a big game in my opinion, but there are lots of big games to expect this weekend. Uh, that's um, starting from tomorrow. But you know what? We get to leave those games. Late edition, 6 10 p.m. is another time we could do so. And don't forget the Sports City Extra at 10 a.m. tomorrow. But quickly on social media, Aisha Tilola says good morning. So Infantino 2 will probably be under investigation. Uh, Chimo Victor says the Super Falcons must continue from where they stopped by thrashing. <laughs> A Victoria gave it by six goals to nil. They don't deserve to be in this competition at all. As you come here, they will say, Oops, the English FA should not allow Wembley host Tottenham versus Chelsea fixture. You need to tell us why. Okay, let me go to WhatsApp and see what's up there. Uh, this message says, uh, from Kelvin, the Jigaman says, I am sure the Super Falcons will do everything in their power to qualify by winning their last match. Oshwala should better. But, um, beg her village people to leave her alone. That's from Kelvin. And this one says, Good morning, guys. I'm happy the international break is over. I'm looking forward to the London derby between Tottenham and Chelsea. And this is from Chimo B. And I also see your message showing me kind of says, Wishing the Super Falcons the very best. Messages still coming through, but let's just keep that interaction going on our social media platform at City1051. Follow us and it cuts across all our social media handle um, platforms now for myself i'm at the silent g d s i l e n t click the follow button i'll come back at 6 10 pm worst late edition thank you for being part of this broadcast wilfred long signing out uh benny here your business my business is next we got the hits we got the gist this is lagos number one lifestyle station city 1051 fm